This is the first of four programs in which I want to question some of the assumptions usually made about the tradition of European painting. Do you like reading? Do you like reading on a screen? Have you changed how you read over time? Chances are good you have. I know I have. Depending on your media experiences, you have changed the way you use media several times. Chances are also good, if not guaranteed, that you will have to do this again in the future. Why? Because your media have changed. When you try to account for these changes, you turn to history and you look at the way communication has changed. Long ago, we spoke and heard stories, or perhaps songs, where ideas were contained in the music of rhythmic speech. Sometimes we illustrated them with pictures, and sometimes they were contained in sacred squiggles. Later, in printed texts, music and rhythm became prose and indexes, then in images and audio recordings, in film and television. Then, all of these pieces converged together into the digital stream. Everything before the stream is our legacy. It was toward the childhood's end of that legacy that John Berger made Ways of Seeing. It was before the digital stream. Some people were born into the stream. Others, myself included, came before. The digital stream changed how we relate words and sounds and images. Legacy people, people who were already around, had to adapt to the digital stream. I had to adapt to reboot. Guess what? We all have to adapt, because the changes are not likely to stop. It was in the early 1970s that John Berger and his collaborators created the book and the four-part BBC series called Ways of Seeing. I was exposed to it quite a few years after it first appeared, in the very first class I took in my film major as an undergraduate. The book and the series changed the way I saw media. I had grown up loving film as a storytelling medium, and had also been intrigued and challenged by the imagination of surrealist painting. There was also a core of concern for social justice, having grown up watching political movements define the inhuman treatment of groups under the banner of order. And John Berger made the connections between these clear. These media surrounding us came from a tradition, and it gave us ideas about who we are and what we should value. Ways of Seeing introduced ideas about how we might think about the media culture that surrounds us, especially where it came from and by extension where it is going. Berger looked at the way media uses images of women as objects, the way they demonstrate what we own, and the way a culture of persuasion through advertising and public relations speaks not to us directly, but to the future selves we might want to become. Berger was drawing from Walter Benjamin, who wrote about media culture in an essay called The Work of Art in the Age of Its Technological Reproducibility. The essay was published in 1935, and again revised in 1936, and finally revised again in 1939. Clearly it was important for Walter Benjamin to revisit and revise his argument. We might think of each version as a reboot. Ways of Seeing is really another reboot of Benjamin's ideas. Berger says of this age, For the first time ever, images of art have become ephemeral, ubiquitous, insubstantial, available, valueless, free. So this was the change from a world of sacred images to a world of commercial images. That is where Berger's legacy work was focused. It is why Ways of Seeing is such an important moment. It's a masterpiece that teaches us how to think about what we see. Now Berger's pages and images are in the digital stream. The legacy days are over. We need to rethink Berger from where we are now. Time for a reboot from a legacy Berger to a digital Berger. Because these changes are not going to stop. And that means that one day, your privilege of being born into the flow will transform into your own need to adapt, to relearn, to retool, to reboot. And I need to reconstruct Berger for the digital world at the moment, close to 50 years later. And then again one day.